the biggest part of Geometry BC, this unit, which is proofs. All right? I don't know if you have siblings who have taken the class or no friends who have taken the class. That is a huge part of this unit, or this course is proofs. And we start the building blocks here in unit two. That's why I think this is so important, this unit. Also, all that vocab we learned in unit one, oh, it's back, and it is back strong. All right, it did not go anywhere. It did not disappear, even though I'm sure some of you would like it to disappear. It is still here. So here's what we're gonna do today, because you're not ready for proofs yet. Later on in the week, I'll introduce your first proof. You're not ready for it yet. Here's what I need you to do today. I am gonna give you something that's true about a diagram. I'm gonna give you something that's true. Based on what I give you, can you one, mark the diagram correctly? We have a lot of markings out there that we talked about unit one. Based on the given, can you mark the diagram correctly? And off to the side, write it in the correct mathematical notation, what you just marked. So let's roll right into example one here. I am giving you that A, B, and B, C. Whoa, do we remember that symbol or not? This is where we got to be now. We're done with unit one holding hands. We got to know these now. That symbol. What do I know about the two line segments in this diagram? What's that the symbol for? Let's roll 12. We're 12, 12, 12, 12. Do we have? Yes, we do. Olivia, what's that symbol? Perpendicular. Say it with confidence. You got it. All right, great. I know what the symbol is, but do I remember what that word meant? So now I can mark my diagram with the correct symbol. So if you haven't already, please mark your diagram with the correct symbol showing me I know what perpendic perpendicular means. Because we said in unit one, anytime I hear perpendicular, boom, I'm thinking about this. All right, what are you marking on your diagram for me? Talk to me. Two, Zoe, what are you marking? Okay, where? Because there's three spots I could possibly put this. Um, at, at angle B. Perfect. Awesome job there. At angle B. So that's the first thing I need you to have the ability to do today is read what's true, mark it on your diagram. The last thing I need, how do I write what Zoe just told me to mark mathematically? We are going to organize all our thoughts going forward here into two columns. We are going to have what's called a statements column followed by, right next to it, a reasons column. Here's where we're going to organize all the facts we think are true. Under the statements is going to go everything that we think is true, right next to it, why it's true under the reasons. So we're going to organize it by doing numbers. So number one, here's our first true statement right here. That's always going to be our first statement we write in the statements reasons columns. AB, line segment AB is perpendicular to line segment BC. We know that is true. And in the reasons, we're going to put another number one so we know what goes with what. Why is that true? Don't make it complicated. Why is it true? Because it was? It was given to us. And that's exactly what I'm going to write my reasons. It's true. It was given. So that's always get used to that. Even when we start proofs later on in the week, that's always going to be our first statement, whatever was given. All right, now you're on the hook for everything else now. So statement two, what else is true? You probably want to tell me whatever you marked is true. So what did we just mark? What did Zoe have me mark up on this diagram? So I could put this symbol into words. What's marked up there now? 12. Two. Olivia, what, what did we mark? What it? What's it? Name it now. What is this? Well, I put a put this symbol at angle angle ABC. So I'm going to say angle ABC is. And what did we put there? What did we put there? That's a a. Oh, that's not a perpendicular symbol. That's a right angle. So ABC is a right angle. You will start noticing me do some abbreviations. Everyone see me abbreviate right RT. 
Anything I abbreviate, you can abbreviate. You start doing your own hieroglyphics, though, we may have an issue. All right, whatever I abbreviate, you can. All right, here's where some of you might struggle today. Why? Why is it a right angle? What up here said to put a right angle there? All right, what up here said, boom, I know that's a right angle. In your own words, and then I'll tell you exactly what I want written down. In your own words. Woo, six. Thomas, why was that a right angle? That was perfect. That's awesome. That's an awesome explanation. I'm just going to change a few words to what you said, but that's awesome. Because perpendicular lines form what type of angles? Right angles. That's how I know it was a right angle, because perpendicular lines form the right angle. So this is where we're going to go today. From the given and your knowledge to marking it to putting it in statements reasons. Every class today, somebody has asked the following question after I've done problem number one. Well, how many of these statements should I have? Depends on the problem. You definitely should have at least two. You should have one more than the given. At the givens, I don't count. All right, you don't get any credit from me for writing down a given. You should at least have one more. And I would think... Today, anyway, on, when you go to tonight's assignment, you should probably max have four. All right. Is there really anything else you can tell me? Maybe that ABC is a right triangle now, but I know what's coming in the future. This is what I really need you to have. All right. Anything extra to me is just extra. All good? All right. One doesn't make you great. Let's keep trucking. How about number two now? Go ahead, everybody. Read the given I provided you. That's true. Ray BD is the bisector of angle ABC. So can you go from that given to marking something on the diagram immediately that's got to be true then? Based on all our discussion from unit one. Oh, my God. All that vocab does matter. I better know what that word means. So if BD is the bisector of ABC... Please help me mark my diagram. What can you mark and where on my diagram? Ooh, one five going deep. Hey, Gabby. Oh, I put like arc mark. Where? Um, and awesome. Yep. That's got to be true. Right? That's got to be true. All right. Now let's put that in our statement's reasons. So first thing we know is true, BD is the bisector of angle ABC. Now, what are you, now where are you going to have me write in statement two? Take your markings. Now write it symbolically. What do you want me to write in number two now? What's true now? Oh, boy. Oh, the suspense is killing. Hey, Josh. Um, the angle ABB is congruent to the angle BDC. Good. And we remember the congruent symbol. I love it. All right. Now, again, this is the toughest part today. Why are they congruent? What up here said that they were going to be congruent to each other? Talk to me in your own words, and then I'll write what I'm uh, expecting. Six. Thomas, back to you. What up here said that they were going to be congruent? What up here made you put arc marks there? This word right here, right? And because we know definition of a bisector. There you go. Does that make sense there? Definition of, oh, cuts it into two congruent ones. Oh, I'm not done yet. I am not done. Remember I said it could be two, could be more. I want more now. I'm hungry. I'm hungry, and so are you. I want more true info about this diagram other than those two are equal. 
And I'm having you go further because you'll need this sooner or later when we start the real deal proofs. All right, I know a bisector cuts an angle into two congruent angles. And what does it do to the whole angle? Cuts the whole angle in half. Yes, that's what I want to write down now as well, is that, hey, half, oops, sorry, or not, there we go. Half of the whole angle, ABC, is equal to, name one of the two angles now. Half of ABC is the same as angle, pick one, doesn't matter, they're both correct. ABD, A, or you could go CBD. Okay, yeah, that's what also what a bisector does. Cuts an angle into half, not into just two congruent parts, but also cuts it in half. And what do you think I'm going to put for the reason? How do I know it cuts it in half? Definition of? Definition of? Bisector. Now, hey, this will be the this was the last time I ever write out the word definition. D E F. All right, we can do that for definition. And no, you cannot abbreviate bisector. Oh, what's what's wrong with BIS? I don't know. It could be bisquick. Other words that start with BIS, I guess. All right. Okay, we're good. So there are two things you can get from a bisector. The two pieces are equal, and the I take half the angle. All right, on to three. Uh, as soon as you guys get to three, you'll notice a given, but what is missing? What's missing here? There's nothing to mark because I didn't provide A. Oh, so sad, honors kids. How about you make your own? How does he not provide a diagram? Suck it up. M is the midpoint. Hopefully you remember what that word meant from unit one, right? Hopefully you guys are marking your diagram now correctly, now that you know M's the midpoint. And speaking of marking it correctly, mark it for me. What you, markings are you putting on here and where, seven? Amy? Uh, a, um, line to A, M, and M B are They are, so what, what are those you want me to put on there to show? I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah. Tick marks, hash marks. Yep, you're good. Good enough for me. All right, statements, reasons time. And if anybody's mesmerized how I just connect the S's and the R's, you don't have to do that. I just get fancy and show off. I know it's pretty, it's pretty nasty. I know. Write in your givens. Yes, you can abbreviate midpoint M-I-D-P-T. That's fine with me. Okay, next up, what we just marked in the diagram. Line segment AM is congruent to line segment MB. Ooh, what do you think I'm going to write here based on last proof here? How do you know that those two are equal? What up here tells you those two are equal? Talk to me. 11 will. So what are you basically telling? What, what did you just define for me? A midpoint, right? So definition of a midpoint. I want more here though. I want more. What else do we know is true? Yes, those two are equal. Also, what's that midpoint do in the segment AB? Splitting in half, correct. So half of AB is equal to, you pick AM or MB. By Definition of a midpoint again. How's everyone feeling? All right. All right. Number the last one's unique now. All right. This is a unique one that you might come come across every once in a while, where there's no cool vocabulary term in the given. Right. First one we had what? 
uh, what was the first one? Perpendicular. Second one we had bisector. Last one we had midpoint. No vocabulary term shows up here. All I provided you is a simple diagram. Intersects isn't a vocabulary word. Let's get real. All right, so we're going to have to take that diagram, take a peek at it, and say, oh, 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 I remember these from unit one, and this is what I know about it. All right, can we see that at all? Up here in example four, there's nothing you can, like, midpoint, by, don't add in words that aren't there. Do not put in vocabulary terms that are not there. You need to just look at the diagram and give me something from the diagram. Think you got it, Jeff? Don't say the angle above them. Name it correctly. You're better than S that. With angle w. S. What's angle S? I see angle four angle S's R up here. And angle WSI. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, dub, let me start with WSI. Everyone sees that angle. All right, WSI and what's the other one? ESR. Thank you. ESR. Good. We're naming them properly. Everyone see those two? She's claiming they're equal, huh? They're equal from last unit? So I should be putting my art marks there. And I'm not disagreeing. They are. I want to know a why before I throw this down here. Why, Ian? They're vertical. Remember those bad boys from unit one? Vertical angles? Yep. And also I can put art marks on these two because they're vertical. Great job, everybody. All right. So let's go to our statements and reasons now. And I'm not done either here. I am not done with this diagram. Okay, number one, WR intersects IE, given. Now tell me angle WSI. Again, make sure we name these with three letters. Congruent to ESR. I'm going to do something I have yet not done today. Take a look. I'm also going to put the other pair of vertical angles in the same statement. Why? Because they're both going to have the same reason why they're congruent here. If, if you want to separate into a statement three, maybe make the proof, a maybe make this a little bit longer because you think you're, you know, you want to show everyone you're a little smarter than you actually are. Go ahead. doesn't matter. You put both pair in the same statement or make it separate statements. Both are correct. So what do I have here? WSE is congruent to ISR. I know what many of you want to put down because of our last two problems. You want to put definition of vertical angles. But the definition of a vertical angle is not that they're congruent. The definition is they're opposite each other when two lines intersect. All right, that's not what I want to write here, definition of vertical, because that's not true. If you remember in unit one, you remember this word popping up a few times? Remember that word? A true fact in geometry, and we actually wrote two of them. One of them was about vertical angles. And it said vertical angles are, how do we finish it? If you know two angles are vertical, you know they are. Yeah, and what did we put in statement two? They are? Congruent. So please don't put definition of vertical because that's incorrect. It's a theorem that says vertical angles are congruent. Uh, I'm not done either. I want more. There's something else up here. I think you guys do. What's up? Okay, hold on. I want to go slow so everyone can know what you're talking about. Angle ESW. So he's talking about this one and this. Everyone see those two? saying they're supplementary. Awesome. That's true. I could have also said the same thing about these two. These two. These two. But I'll go with yours. Yep. All right. So statement three is going to say angle WSE and angle WSI are supplementary. Love it. Love it. And again, substitute any adjacent pair in there, and you would have been correct. Ooh, all right. There is something. There's something uh, specific I want, but I want you guys to tell me. 
WSE and WSI are supplementary. Why? In your own words, why? Okay, there's something specific I want, but how do we how do we know they're supplementary? Go ahead, Joe. What do you got for me? Okay, so we're starting to talk about a line, right? Because if I put these two together, they form a line. Absolutely correct. All right, if you wrote it in here, I perfectly accept it. I want a vocabulary term from unit one that if they're next to each other and they form a line, we call them a what? You remember, Doyle? Linear pair. Do you remember linear pair? Two adjacent angles that form a line. And whoa, whoa, I'm not going to put definition of linear pair. Anybody remember? The theorem associated with it, like we had vertical angles are congruent. What did we write? Linear pairs are supplementary. Perfect. And honestly, I, I'm not, I don't want to say 100% because it might be given, but anytime you sit, tell me two angles are supplementary, here's the reason. Linear pairs are supplementary. All right. So that's what you're going to do here with the rest of the time on tonight's assignment. Now do you understand I want to see your own thinking instead of going to the classroom and copying what I think. I want to see what you're thinking here. I will only warn you on one of the problems tonight. Please go to number five for the, one of the problems tonight. I just want to warn you about something that's a common rookie mistake. Everyone see the given on number five, H and M are supplementary. Right, meaning they what? You know what about H and M? They add to 180, right? And that's probably going to be your statement number two. What I don't want you to write is that H and M are 90 degrees. Do you see anything on the givens about their perpendicular? Either do I. And the only reason you're telling me they're 90 is because they look like it. And that's never a reason. All right, it's because they look like it. Okay, all good. So I don't want anything with in that diagram that adds to 90. All right. Go ahead, you can work with other people in your group, other different groups if you want. Your call. If you want me to take a look at something you wrote down, again, at least have two statements written, the given and something else. If you have more, great. But you gotta have more than the given. I'm sorry. What's up, man? So 